Hey, good morning everybody. We're up here doing a garage floor. 28, 26, got a center drain. 6.30 in the morning, concrete just showed up. This was a job, we did the house floor last week. Pretty good sized house floor. Up here on a lake. We didn't do the garage the same day because we just couldn't get enough concrete. We can only get enough through the house. So we're back today, finish this garage up so they can get going on it. So we'll get going here shortly. We've got 10 and a half yards. I think it's around 10 yards. Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. So in this video, we're gonna talk about costs. Like what does a concrete floor like this cost? This is a 28 by 28 garage floor, 784 square feet. So when someone calls me for a price or an estimate, you know, I specialize in just flat work. So I don't do the foundations. I don't do the excavation in the back filling. Those are actually two different things here in Maine. Um, both, both are specialized types of deals. So you know, we got people that just do foundations, we got people that just do excavation, and then us, we just do the flat work. So all kinds of different types of concrete flat work. So in this case, I got a concrete floor, 784 84 square feet, and someone wants to know the price of that, what do I tell them? Well, I've figured out, you know, over the years, we've done, you know, hundreds and hundreds of these, probably thousands. I've figured out that a way that I can do it is by the square foot. Now, a lot of guys, they either charge by the square foot or they charge by the yard. And for me personally, I've always just charged by the square foot for a certain thickness of concrete. So my square foot prices are based on four inch thick concrete floors when that's what I'm pricing. And if I, if it, you know, I move up to six inch stuff or stuff where they have really thick edges, then I have to add that as an extra. So for this floor, I'm basically pricing three different things. I'm pricing the, the two inches of styrofoam that goes down, which is code here in Maine. You gotta have two inches of styrofoam under your concrete. And the labor to put it down. So the styrofoam and then the concrete itself, any additives I put in the concrete, and then the labor to pour it, finish it, you know, saw it. So three basic charges are what I get. Now the concrete here, I usually figure at about, you know, just to be safe, about 200 bucks a yard. Uh, and that includes the fiber mesh, you know, it includes the water reducer, air entrainment, and that's, you know, our basic floor mix for most of our concrete floors that see some, you know, weather or some temperature changes. Uh, interior concrete floors, I don't need the air entrainment, but garages, we put it in, patios, pool decks, all that stuff. But for a garage floor, I basically figure three dollars a square foot so you know this was about 10 yards of concrete 200 bucks a yard is about two thousand dollars right there this is you know a little under 800 square feet so if i figure three bucks a square foot that gets me to about twenty four hundred dollars so that covers me for concrete and maybe a little bit extra if if for some reason the the grade is a little thicker than normal so three bucks a square foot covers me for the concrete and then the styrofoam you know styrofoam varies a little bit in price you always get a call but i figure two dollars a square foot to buy the styrofoam uh, and then i figure a dollar a square foot to pick it up or go get it and then install it so another three bucks a square foot just to get the styrofoam down um, and that gets me you know this on a job like this that's 2400 bucks and then to pour it here, like we're doing, to pour it, to finish it, uh, to saw it, just those three basic things, I figure three bucks a square foot for my labor. You know, and that in that three bucks, obviously it covers all the other business related stuff, like you know the, the auto insurance, the general liability insurance. I carry workman's comp insurance because I actually have employees that are on a payroll. Uh, so, and then, you know, payroll taxes along with that, plus all the other things that go along with the business. So three bucks a square foot, I've learned, 
covers that pretty good where I can still make a make a profit. And so that gets us up to nine bucks a square foot for a 28, 28 garage floor like this. So I know it's, it's 784 square feet, but we, if we just round that up to 800, just for, just for simpler terms of multiplying, you know, nine, nine times eight is $7,200 for this garage floor, four inches thick. And that gets your floor installed. So when, you know, when people call me or they email me and they want a, just a basic idea of what something costs for a concrete floor, four inches thick, I can just give them a price. It's gonna be, you know, without looking at it, I can tell them. Without knowing what the access is, if I don't know, I can say it's generally going to be about nine bucks a square foot is where we're going to start, and at least that gives them an idea of, hey, do you know, do I want to hire these guys? Do I want to move forward with this or not? So, I'm hoping that helps you guys with the cost figuring thing. It's, it's you know, like I said, uh, Darren and Luke and I we're all on payroll um, because I'm a corporation, so we all you know we all get pay each other. I mean, basically, I pay. I do all the payroll myself, but we all get a payroll check each week. And then Harvey, Harvey comes, helps us out as a sub, so we pay him as a sub. So we just, each job he comes on, we just write him a check to come up and help us for labor. He doesn't usually stay and finish. He usually just comes to help pour, so he's just there for a couple hours in the morning. And that's basically how we run, you know, our concrete floors like that. Now this one, this one, as you can see, it's got a nice, uh, pretty good size center drain in it. And it slopes the garage from the outside slopes an inch and a half to that center drain. So I'm showing you kind of how we slope a garage floor in the process of this conversation. So that, that whole back uh, part of the garage right now all slopes to that center drain. So from the back wall kind of like where I'm, Harvey's pulling the bull flow, it's an inch and a half. From those two, from the right corner and the left corner, it slopes diagonally an inch and a half to the drain. You know, when we, when we mag those edges, when we mag float those edges out on the perimeter, the first thing we do, which I didn't get on the video this morning, was we set up a laser, a uh, self-leveling laser. We shoot our grades. This one, the guy wanted about six inches down from top of wall. So... We shoot a grade down six inches, we mark it, we snap a chalk line, and then we can mag float, kind of what Darren's doing right now there in that little centerpiece between the doors. We can mag float a wet pad to the chalk line. That gets the perimeter all nice and nice and level around the whole perimeter. And you want that level, basically, you know, to get yourself a nice center drain, you want the outside level. You don't want to you don't want to mess with sloping the outside and then trying to slope it to the center drain too. At least that's what we found works best. So right now that's me on your right, you know, uh, screeding by the garage doors. That's Luke on the left. So he's screeding on this part of the concrete floor that's sloped to the drain. The part that I'm screeding on on the outside is flat. So it's kind of kind of sloping diagonally towards the drain as we go here and we've you know as long as you have enough slope the key is getting enough slope to the drain and then when you get done power troweling and you get done sawing you don't usually have puddles if you don't put enough slope to that drain let's say there was only like a half an inch slope or three quarters of an inch slope in you know 14 feet water's not going to run very good if there's not enough slope it's still going to just because of you know because of friction or whatever it's just going to sit there on the slab and kind of look like a little puddle especially if you don't power trial it right you know you can really mess things up if you don't know how to power trial and and use the power trial to get the floor even flatter on the surface um, than it already is here after screeding it and bowl floating it so i you know for us these two bay garages whether they're 24 by 24 or 26 by 26 or 28 by 28 like this, I like to go, I like to go a, a minimum of about an inch and a half slope. You can even go two inches. Two inches would be fine. You, it wouldn't really be that noticeable is what we found. So just to give you a little insight on the floor drain thing. And again, the cost thing. If you got any questions about cost, if there's things that you do differently with cost, you know, let me know in the comments, ask any questions about estimating or, or what pe to tell people what you know what things cost down in the comments and we can 
we can debate it down there. We could talk about it down there. Maybe I can give you a little bit more insight of how I price things down there. So that's generally what works best for me. And I know some guys like pricing by the yard. One of the guys I do floors for, he does foundations. He prices everything by the yard. So in this case, you know, if it's 10 yards, $7,200, that would be $720 a yard, um, which, which sounds relatively high, but that's kind of that's the way things are going um, as far as pricing things by the yard, comparing them to pricing things by the square foot. So let me know what, how you guys think we did on this. This this actually took us, the four of us, about, I think it was less than less than 30 minutes to get this thing poured, screeded, and both loaded here. Um, I didn't really, I didn't cut a ton out of the video. I cut just some of the, the dead spots out where we're, you know, either moving the truck or uh, just standing there talking for a second. I cut some of those dead spots out. And you can see the video came to just over 12 minutes. So actual working time didn't take us very long to get this done and another thing that what I like about the water reducer some of you guys I know I get a lot of comments about the concrete looks wet but you got to understand what water reducer does when when they add water reducer at the plant that's a chemical that goes in the truck when they batch that means we can pour a looser slump that chemical allows us to pour a looser slump without using water so if you pull that if you pull that water reducer out this concrete right here would be about a three inch slump without the water reducer. So the truck, the concrete in the truck is about a three inch slump. They add the ounces of water reducer, it's about 15 ounces per yard, and it boosts it, it boosts the slump up to, you know, what this looks like here, on which, whatever you guys would call this, about a seven maybe, without adding water. So it doesn't really weaken the concrete, doesn't, doesn't hurt the strength, it would still test out and break out at, you know, 3,500 or higher. So. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you on the next one.